Hi, my name is Nick, and today I'm going to show you guys how you can create a Microsoft form, and with the data that you capture there, send it into Microsoft Planner, um, which will then integrate into your Microsoft Outlook calendar. And this is incredibly useful if you're going to create a form for, let's say, holiday requests, and put that into an approval flow. Um, and capture all that information into something like Microsoft Planner, and then obviously see all of your holidays um, from various different colleagues around the business inside um, your Microsoft Outlook calendar. So incredibly useful from those kind of functionality. Um, and guys, if you find this useful, uh, then definitely do go ahead and click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot. Um, and it'll keep you informed of all the other up-to-date uh, videos that we have going on on the channel. Uh, with that said, let's jump on over to the desktop and I'll roll you through just how to do this. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is just head over to office.com. From office.com, we're going to need to load up a couple of different applications. So the first thing we're going to do is check down this app bar just here and see if we can locate Microsoft Power Automate. Um, if not, we can click on the more options at the top here in expand. Uh, and what we want is Power Automate, Forms and Planner. These are the three that we're going to start with. Okay, so I'm going to just right click on um, Power Automate, open that in a new tab. That's going to take me to Power Automate. And we're going to hop back over to um, Office uh, here, office.com, right click on Forms, open Forms, and then I'm going to come back again and right click on Planner and open um, Planner in a new tab as well. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually go to Microsoft Forms, um, and we're going to think, the first thing that we need to do is create that form to capture those holiday requests. So I'm going to click on New Form, and I'm going to just call this uh, Holiday Request. Okay, and I'm going to click Add New, uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is call it a text field, uh, and I want the first name, okay, and then I'll make sure that's required. I'm going to click on uh, another free text field here, and I'm going to call this last name, okay, and that's obviously required as well. I'll then go ahead and add another um, option. This time I'm going to go with a date, uh, and I'm going to call this one um, Start Date. Uh, and it's obviously required. Uh, I'm going to head and um, add another date field, and this time it'll be end date, okay? Uh, and it's obviously required. So we have a series of four questions, the first name, the last name, when you want your holiday to start, and when do you want your holiday to end, okay? Well, on most people, that would be never, but um, okay, very simple form. And we can just preview what this looks like just here, okay? Pretty straightforward. So now we have a form uh, that we can use to capture data. And it takes a matter of moments to set that up. Um, now, the first name and last name are not necessarily required, um, but I like to have them as a safeguard just in case something goes wrong with the email address. Uh, and what I mean by that is if you click on the ellipses over on the top right hand corner uh, and go down to settings here, uh, you want to make sure you can record their name, which records the email address of the person who uh, filled in the form, right? Um, if you don't have that ticked, you won't capture the information. Um, so it's always good to have the fail safe of the first and last names as well if you wanted to look them up separately. Um, but obviously I'm gonna have that ticked in this example. And the next thing we want to do is actually go ahead and click on share and copy the link, okay? So we wanna be able to share this form data, don't we? So we're gonna copy that link. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop over to um, Microsoft Teams very quickly here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to that office guy's general channel and I'm going to hit the little plus button to create a tab for my holiday form. I'm going to click on a website and I'm going to call this holiday uh, request. Okay, and then I'm going to paste that URL into there. Uh, I'm going to remove that and just click on save. That now adds the holiday request form directly here. I can go ahead and just log into the form using that. Uh, and now I can populate it, right? So here within my holiday request, I have a standard form. I'll go ahead and just type this in and just add myself some holiday requests. And so I'm gonna start this holiday request today on Sunday the 6th, and I'm gonna run it until, well, let's say Monday the 7th, okay? And I'm gonna submit it. And obviously now that's been submitted. So what I can do is minimize um, Microsoft Teams again. And we can see here from the responses, you can see exactly what's just happened. I've just responded. We're starting on the 6th until the 7th, okay? So that data now exists in the ecosystem, which is fantastic. So we can know, we know it works. Now, obviously you can have loads of different ways you can customize this even further. I'm gonna keep it really basic because it's just a basic capture form. The next thing that we want to do is actually then head over to Power Automate. From Power Automate, what we want to do is go ahead and create a new flow. Uh, and from here, we want it to be an automated flow, okay? Um, we're gonna call this Holiday Requests. 
Uh, and then what I do is with the first option actually is quite fortunate enough is when a new response is submitted. If you don't see that, uh, you can go ahead here and just type um, form. Uh, and basically it's when a new response is submitted. That's the one that we want. We're gonna click that and then we're gonna click create. This creates um, our basically a start of our flow, which is fantastic. So what we're gonna do um, is it's gonna ask for the form ID. So we're gonna choose a form from our drop down list. And I have a couple, which is unfortunate. So I'm gonna go with, um, probably should be that one there. And uh, we'll check if that's working in a moment. If not, I'm gonna to have to change that. Um, the next option that we have here is the next step. So we want a new step. And this time we want um, to type it in form and we want to get response details. Okay. So we want to get all of the details about the submission. So to do that, we're going to come in here. We're going to choose the holiday request form, which is the same as this one. Uh, and we're going to choose the ID from the dynamic field here that represents the um, submission. Okay. So we're going to click that. So now this step is going to get all the details about what's been submitted. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do now is, um, basically create a bit of an approval flow, right? So we need to know who submitted the data and um, who to send it to. So if, uh, for example, uh, I have an employee working for me, then you know, when they submit their holiday request, I need to approve that holiday request. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on new step and I'm going to type approve. Um, and straight away, we can see that we can create an approval. So I'm going to head uh, and click on start and wait for an approval. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. Um, and this is going to be here. So basically the first to respond, which will be fine. Um, and then we're going to give this a title. So straight away, we have access now to a lot of dynamic content here um, that basically symbolizes uh, all of the information that was inside the form. So we have the first name, the last name, the, the start date, the end date, and their email address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put in the first name here. Uh, I'm going to put a dash and just say holiday request. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could, um, in fact, just put a space there and put the last name as well um, here. So first name, last name, uh, and then holiday request. Okay, now we have the assigned to. So I want to assign this to myself. Um, or if I wanted to, I could go ahead and come up and add an additional step just after this. Um, and I can do this, I can call it manager, right? I can get the manager's details from 365 based on the email address of the person who submitted. So I'm going to go to that email address there, uh, which is the person who submitted it. And this will then go ahead and get the manager email address for, um, for our approval flow, right? So I can assign this approval to the manager, right? So I can go ahead and find their email address in this list. Um, and I think be here, Maybe one second. Um, but, but I think it's going to be the mail. I'll go with that one. So we can now go ahead and basically email it um, directly to that person. I'm also just going to add myself in here as well, um, just to make sure that uh, it does come across. I'm going to go with Nick at that office guy, uh, which is fantastic. So um, it's now going to be mailed to the manager. It's going to be also be mailed to me. And the first one of us to approve this holiday request um, will then obviously proceed to the next steps. Now, this is not necessarily going to work for you guys if Office 365 has not been set up correctly. Um, so, you know, we need to know obviously who reports to whom in order for this step to work. Um, I have other examples where I actually use an Excel document and then I find the email address of the person who responded here inside an Excel lookup sheet and tells me who's uh, who that person reports to. And then I use that email address of the manager that in that way. Um, so you can skip this step altogether uh, if you wanted to, um, or you can have a, a holiday request form specifically for your own employees and then just put your yourself here as well. Um, so the next thing here is we can add details. Uh, so here we could put if we um, skip down here, we can just go to the get response details sections and we can just say, you know, it's the first person, we'll go down a line, uh, last name. Um, we can then go down another line and just say the start date is there, the end date is there. And if you wanted to, in your form, you could add a whole notes section and add notes in as well. We can add links and there's a whole host of additional items as well. But I'm going to leave this uh, pretty open uh, as it is without um, you know, messing around with the advanced settings. Just keep it quite basic to start with. Okay, so so far we've 
had a submission, we've got the details about the submission, we've got the manager of the person who submitted the form, and then we've gone ahead and created an approval flow that will then send an approval request to the manager of the person who submitted the form. Okay, so now after this point here, what we wanna do is we wanna check a couple of things. Um, we want to be able to, um, first of all, click on the ellipses here, and we wanna configure a run after. Um, so if get manager v2 fails, we still want to be able to continue the process flow, okay? Um, so we wanna tick that as well, uh, and I'm gonna click done. That way it won't fail um, the, the whole entire uh, request, holiday request as a flow. So I'm gonna leave that as that is. And then I'm gonna add another step. This time we need a condition, and the condition is going to basically give us the outcome of this approval. Okay, so I'm gonna come here, and as you see from the dynamic content, we now have the start and wait for approval, and what we want is the outcome. Okay, so we're gonna click outcome and put that into the conditions. We're then going to go ahead and say it's equal to, and then we're gonna type approve. Okay, so if it is approved, we then want to do something with it. And if it's rejected, we also want to do something with it. Okay, um, so let's start with the um, has been approved side of things. The first thing that we can do here is probably send an email to the person who submitted the holiday request, right? So we're going to go email and um, we're going to go ahead and find the send email v2 and we're going to give that a click. We're then going to um, use uh, dynamic content in our email field. And we're going to basically go to the responder's email address, the very first action, if you will. We're going to click that. Okay, so then we're going to give this a subject. We're going to say holiday approved. Okay, and if we wanted to, we can add more dynamic content or uh, further details into this section here for the body of the email. So I'm just going to go ahead and find uh, what was actually submitted. And we're just going to go with a first name, last name, I'm going to say your holiday started in and ends here. Okay, so we have that dynamic content. And if you wanted to, we can do a, a lot more with it. I'm just going to, for this example, keep it straightforward and just move on to the next step. So it's been approved. We send the email. The next thing we want to do is create a task for Microsoft Planner. So here I'm going to type Planner and I'm going to find um, the Create a Task button. I'm going to give that a click. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and find the um, That Office Guy team. We're going to find the plan that sits inside that team, which is a test list. And then I'm going to give this a title and I'm going to go with some dynamic content to start with. I'm going to go with the first name um, here and I'm going to go dash holiday. OK, so we can now know that, that person's on holiday and it's inside planner. We're going to put this into the bucket. I only have one bucket in my uh, test list, which is to do. Um, but you might have a whole bucket dedicated to holidays or a whole plan dedicated to holidays if you wanted to. Now, the start date and the end date, I usually have trouble with these is the dynamic content doesn't exist. Right. So what we need to do is, first of all, actually add a step above the um, create task. And what we're going to do is here is we're going to add something called an, uh, a compose. So we're going to go compose. I'm going to click that and then in that input we're going to grab our, um, our start date from the get response details we're going to get the start date okay then we're going to add another one uh, just below there um, and we're going to type compose again okay and uh, we'll give that a click and this time we're going to add the um, end date okay from the response details section the end date now I'm going to quickly, uh, quickly rename these so we know what they are we're going to say this is the start date Okay, and we're going to rename this one as well, and this is the end date. Okay, so we're going to keep that pretty simple. Uh, and obviously, I'm moving at quite a fast pace here, guys, because I'm going to imagine that if you're you're going to be relatively familiar with how this stuff works, but do slow down or rewind the video at any point uh, if you need to. I wanted to just make sure that this was out there, um, and you know, I think it's it's pretty easy to do, but do just you know fast forward, rewatch as you need to, uh, and slow it down and pause it if you need to as well. Okay, so we have a start date and end date now. Now we can use those inside of our task, right? So now I come into the start date and here we go. We have the output for um, end date and we need the output for the start date. So our start date here time is the um, output of the start date here. And our due date is gonna be our output of the end date. Okay, so now we have those two in here. We can now obviously assign this to people as well if we wanted to, but because it's a holiday, I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna leave that as is. Now, the next step we want to do is go ahead and update those task details. So I'm going to click Planner again, 
And this time, what we want to do is we want to um, find the update task detail section just at the bottom here. We give that a click. Um, this time we're going to have a task ID. Now the task ID is the task that we just created. So we're going to click in here and we're going to enter a custom value. The custom value activates the dynamic content on the right hand side. And what we want to do is find the, the subsection here that says um, create a task. We're going to scroll down until we find the ID of the task that we just created. And we're going to put that into there. Okay, so that keeps it pretty moving pretty fluid. Now, um, if we move on to the next step, we have this description. Now, the description is where we can add in uh, all the details of the holiday request. So if we scroll down, we can go and find all of the response details again. Okay, so we get the first name. Uh, I can press enter and I'll go to the last name. Um, I'll come back down here and go uh, the start date is there and the end date is there, right? So all of the details. Um, and then you can obviously write whatever you want in here and you can make it uh, you know, sound a lot better than I am just doing this. But um, it gives you an idea of what you can do. You can also attach documents if you want to as well. Okay, so um, in summary then, we've sent an email on the approval. We've obviously got those dynamic contents of the start and end date. We've created the task, we've updated the details of the task um, and everything there is good. So that puts an end, I guess, to our um, approved section. Now on the uh, rejected sign, so if the holiday request is rejected, we can go ahead and send an email um, to them basically saying, sorry, it's been rejected, right? Um, so we're gonna go find the send email v2. Uh, so we're gonna do that. Uh, again, we're gonna choose from the dynamic content. Let's scroll over here a little bit. And we're gonna find the responder's email uh, and we're gonna add that into here as well. Now the subject will be holiday um, rejected. Uh, and you can say whatever you want. And then we can obviously put the details in here um, for what has been rejected, right? So we can come down to the response details and we'll just say, okay, the first name of the person, the last name of the person, the start date of the per of, of the holiday request and the end date. And again, that's pretty, you know, you can add whatever you need into here. Uh, and also there's something called notes, right? So once the approval has been rejected, the person who's doing the, the rejection or approval, they have the ability to add notes and you can pull those notes into, um, into the section as well. So there's something called response comments um, and that's basically comments added from the, the, basically the person who rejected. Um, so you can go ahead and do that as well, which I can drop that in and it kind of puts it into a bit of a loop for you. Um, so I'm going to re remove that because I don't want a loop. Um, not in this example, but you have the ability to do so if needed. And I'll just remove the apply to each there. Okay, so you do have that ability to add those comments in if you want. Um, but I'm going to keep it really simple, just like this. So there you go. So now we have a, a complete process flow here, right? So a form gets submitted. We've updated the details. We've got the manager of the person who um, filled the form in. We've sent off an approval to that manager and they've either rejected or accepted, right? And if they accept it um, and approve the holiday, then we're gonna create a task in uh, Microsoft Planner um, and we're gonna make sure all the details of that uh, are included. Okay, so what we're gonna do is click save on this one. Okay, and uh, what we're gonna do is go back to our form over here uh, and actually, you know, fill it in, right? So I'll do this in Microsoft Teams and I can go ahead and submit another response. And this time I'm going to go with Nick uh, Regan. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a date in here. And I'm going to do the same as before, the 6th to the 7th. And I'm going to submit it. Okay, I'll minimize Microsoft Teams. Come back to my Power Automate flow. Uh, and what I can do is just wait for this to kind of come through here. Um, it shouldn't take a moment. Um, so do bear with me. I might just have to fast forward uh, a little bit uh, in order to get this going. Um, and the other thing I can do is just check to make sure that um, I'm using obviously the correct holiday um, calendar, uh, sorry, the, the correct form ID because I had two holidays, right? I've gone for this one, um, but it might not be in the correct one to use. So obviously I can go in here and I can peek the code. And by peeking the code, I can see the form ID, right? So this is the ID of the form um, that I'm actually looking for. And if I come here, go to share, and we can have a look at the ID. It ends in 4U, so MSS 4U. Come back here, we can see that this is not the correct form, right? So uh, what I can do is I can come here and change it to this one, and come here and peek the code again, and just see if this is the right one. So this is the correct form. So I'm gonna click done on there. I'm gonna come here, and I'm also gonna just make sure that this is the correct one as well. And I'm gonna go peek the code here. See the form ID is MS4U. 
Um, this might not be a problem that you have, it's just that I have multiple forms with the same name. I'm gonna click that and save. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is go back to Microsoft Teams again and submit a third response. Um, so this time it should go through to our Power Automate flow. And um, we're gonna go for the sixth and the seventh. Um, and then we're gonna submit. So now that's been submitted, I'll go ahead and come back to our flow. I'll come back here and now we can see that we actually have one running. So we go ahead and click on that and we can see what's happening within our flow. So we've, uh, a form has been submitted. We've got the details of it. We've got the manager um, of, the, of the person, which is, uh, so basically I signed myself as my own manager here using two different email addresses. Um, so basically I've got the email address uh, of the person um, and the mail of that person, right? So that is fine. Um, right, so from here, what we can do is then see that we are sending an approval and uh, we basically sent an email out to ready to be approved. Now, if I go into Microsoft Teams, there's actually Microsoft Power, Power Automate or Flow as an app, right? So I can come in here and I can click this. Um, and then it basically shows you all of the various different things, right, that are happening in Microsoft uh, Power Automate, formerly known as Flow. If you click on approvals, this will also show you the approval request that you've been sent, right? So here we are, right? I have this um, request that's been sent and I can approve it here um, or I can reject it, okay? Now, obviously we just notice it's called holiday request. It hasn't got a name at the front. So I can go ahead uh, and come back to, um, to my form data. I click on edit just for a second and just see what's going on with this, um, this here because um, it's, uh, it's because, right, so, because I changed the form up here, it's changed automatically the um, these titles and this dynamic data is now incorrect. So what I'm needing to do is remove these, okay, and add them back in using the correct form data. And um, so this is a really quick step, so bear with me. I'm just going to um, go ahead and basically say um, the first name and the last name, okay, and then I can obviously do the same just down here, I can go ahead and put in the first name, the last name, uh, the start, I'll do that in the right spot, uh, start date and end date down here. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to check to make sure that all of these are also flowing as expected. And um, so we can see that I didn't update everything as I should have done. And um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. That one, it should be okay. And um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to just find all of the details uh, and we're going to go first name uh, we're going to go last name start date and end date okay so we're going to pop those in we'll also do the same here we obviously need to make sure that the title is um, you know, also listed correctly so we're going to go with uh, the first name um, and then holiday okay that's going to be the title uh, the rest of that is should be okay we'll just check this one's not right and this one's not right so we'll just quickly update those and um, so this is a bit of a tip i guess guys if you do come across any troubleshooting um, of how to go about fixing it it's relatively straightforward and um, but you do have to think about all the things that you might have changed on route and um, so when i change that form right at the top it affects everything that flows underneath it um so it, it's not too bad to do, but if one to just keep mind, be mindful of, um, and you'll make sure you update everything um, that that you need to afterwards as well. Um, so just come back here and that. end date, right? So that's that side, um, and then obviously we'll just make sure that our rejections also updated accordingly. Um, and then it's the last one before we can resubmit. Um, but unfortunately, we can resubmit without actually having to go through the process of filling the form in again. So um, from a test point of view, it's not too bad. Right, so I'm gonna click save on that. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back one. Uh, I'm gonna come into all runs uh, and then I'm gonna click on cancel that one there. Okay, because it's it's, it's old, it's not, not no longer needed. And um, from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and reject it um, just because I want it out of the system there. That's done, right? So now it's not in our flows approval system. And what with it ticked, I can go ahead and resubmit it. I'm going to click yes to the resubmission. Um, and that's going to then flow through again. So it's been submitted. We've got the details, we've got the manager, and it's just going to go through and create that approval flow. Now it's going to create the email and 
and it's going to add it into our approval area here as well. So I'm just going to click on refresh that um, and that should come through here in a moment. So there it is right now we have the first name, the last name uh, and it's a holiday request. I can click into this. It's going to load up all the details here on the right hand side. I can see who it is, when they want uh, and obviously I get the ability to add comments uh, which we were talking about earlier um, and we can obviously choose to approve, reject, reassign, etc, etc, right? Now, there's a couple of options. If you have the app for Flow installed on your phone, all of these will also be pinged straight through to your phone as a notification. Um, you obviously have access to this in Teams and also you have access to it in Outlook via emails as well. Um, you can approve it here, you can click into it um, and we can obviously go ahead and approve it here as well. So I'm going to click approve and confirm that and um, haven't added any details. Once that's done, it's, it's gone, it's out of your approval section. Uh, it's not a problem. I'm going to go back now to um, our Outlook here. And the next thing that we want to do is head over to our planner app, right? In our planner app, we have our test list plan. We're going to click that and we can see that our holiday has been created here as well. Uh, I can click in and we can see um, I haven't added any details, strangely enough, but it is for the 6th and the 7th. Um, so what I can do is just close that down for a second, come back to our flow. Uh, and we can see that we're still in the conditions here and it's still in the midst of um, updating our task. And um, sometimes when you do this for the first time, the first one doesn't actually seem to go through very well. If I were to now submit more multiple after the first, it seems to update fine. I imagine there's some kind of bug in uh, the way that Power Automate is talking with um, the plan for the first time. But uh, once the first one's out of the way, the rest of it seems to flow very, very efficiently. Um, so if we go back into our test list here, here you go, you can see now we have this holiday uh, request as a task inside our planner, right? Um, so the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and click on the ellipses here as the plan owner and go to add to Outlook calendar. From here we can publish and then copy our link. Okay, so we're going to copy this link and then we're going to go and head over to Outlook. From Outlook we're going to go plus out, uh, calendar and then we're going to go from internet and we're going to go control V and paste that in or right click and paste. Clicking OK saying yes we're okay with that we have a holiday calendar, okay? And uh, what we can do is right click here. I think it's here, I can right click, I can't right click. Um, okay, so for some reason it's not letting me right click, I can rename it later and um, that's fine. So we can click on this little arrow here and it puts it into a merge mode. Okay, so now we can see two calendars overlaying. We obviously have our holiday um, from, our, uh, from our plan appearing here. So we have the Nick holiday. If I right click, it's supposed to be able to rename, um, but it's not letting me, which is a little frustrating. Um, but nonetheless, here we are. So we can have the ability now to add all of these holidays and see them all overlaid into our direct calendar, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, if we head back over to um, uh, our plan, we can just close that down. We don't need to use planner anymore, so we can just go ahead and close planner. Um, and we can still see that our flow is running. It's just a little frustrating. Um, but if we were to submit more, they would flow through without any problems. It's always the first one for some reason that causes an issue. Um, but that's it, guys. That's a simple way of basically creating a um, flow uh, that basically links in form data uh, and pulls it all the way through. Um, so, guys, hopefully you found this uh useful. Uh, if you did, then go ahead and hit that like button for me. Uh, and if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you'll be kept up to date with all of the videos uh, that we do here at the uh, Office Guy. Um, and guys, it's pretty simple uh, to basically create a basic form, have that form data um, go into Power Automate uh, and pull all of that data into Microsoft Planner and then integrate Microsoft Planner into Outlook. It keeps uh, everything actually quite fluid uh, once you get the process set up. You don't actually have to do anything other than approve holidays or reject holidays and everything just seems to flow through. I've been using this for about a year now, this method, uh, and it works well for me. Um, so hopefully it will work well for you guys as well. Um, so as always, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.